we're here with a six month checkup on Tony and her 32 foot electrically converted boat Bellamy. Uh, she's got it up on the, not so much the dry dock, just the beach at low tide uh, in order to do work on the bottom. And we're gonna use this opportunity to upgrade her propeller to one with a higher pitch that should boost the top speed and just check in on how things are going. The way this works is that at a high tide, it came up and land at the keel right on the beach here and then have it tied to some pilings on the dock. And then every night uh, the tides come back and then floated the boat. And then by 11 a.m. in the morning, the tides back out again and then I can work on the whole bottom. And so it's a pretty nice system for working on the bottom without having it hauled out in a, in a marina. I'm really excited to finally have the hull painted. So there'll be two coats of paint along the waterline here. And I'll finally not have growth on the bottom of the boat, so I think I'll actually have almost double the speed. I've been living on this boat for two years and I've taken it all over the Strait of Georgia and um, been sailing through the winter. And I'm looking forward to this year sailing way up to the Broughtons. In, in August, I'm gonna be sailing up to Echo Bay near Port McNeil, where I'll be based out of the Broughtons and the north end of Vancouver Island and central coast throughout the fall and the winter. Uh, so one of the things we noticed on Tony's installation is that when we went full throttle, the boat only got up to about four, four and a half knots. And that's because the combination of the motor on her boat and the 48 volt battery voltage has a maximum shaft speed of around uh, 1,000 to 1,100 RPM. Uh, but her boat was originally powered with a diesel engine and a gearbox that spun the propeller at about 1,500 RPM. Um, so the options to fix this are either run at a higher voltage battery, uh, so there was an option of setting a 72 volt battery bank, um, but most people in the marine industry are more comfortable dealing with 48 volt installations. So if we wanted to maintain power at that speed at 48 volts, we need to upgrade or swap out the propeller to one that has a higher pitch. Um, so I went shopping around online and found a nice three blade prop on eBay with a 11 inch pitch. So each rotation would move the propeller forwards 11 inches instead of eight inches. If we go, go at the same location on the blade, you can see that the new propeller is at a steeper angle. The other thing, two blade propellers are really common on sailboats because in principle, they can have the least amount of drag while you're sailing, especially if you orient the shaft this way so that it's in line with the keel, um, so that you don't have too much resistance from the propeller when you're under sail. Uh, three blade propellers always provide a bigger area of drag. And if you're on a pure sailing boat, that can be a hindrance. It reduces the top speed that you get under sail. This is much less of a concern on an electric drive because instead of the propeller just sitting there idle, you can actually power it with the motor. It's just a small amount of wattage and completely negate any drag that the prop has. Uh, and so that gives us the advantage of using a three blade prop, which runs more quietly, uh, is generally more balanced um, and presumably will give us better regenerative recapture when we're just under sail. So ideally with the two blade prop you just have a two jaw puller but uh... yeah. <laughs> um, yeah if you got one it might become useful yeah. so it's two 450 watt panels i was so lucky to find a friend to teach me how to tig weld so i was tig welding a whole bunch of steel all spring and it's a structure that's able to pivot so i'll be chasing photons around in the mornings and evenings so after a few months of welding, my beloved structure, finally mounting it was a really beautiful moment. But then every time in this weekend trip I did a few days ago to Maine Island for a music festival, so about 30 nautical miles away, uh, the whole trip went really well. The motor held up great. I got pretty much all the way there and mostly back um, on electric and also under sail. So that went perfectly. I was keeping a keen eye on my solar structure to see how it lasted in the waves and, and swell from ferries. And it held really strong, which is great. Yeah, yeah so like the blowtorch we could pick up in a lot of places. There's a lot of things. Yeah, we're still close. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll watch this thing still be just as crazy. 
So the weak spot in this gear puller is the linkage bar. And the reason we are having such a nightmare of a problem keeping this aligned is that it totally stretched out and elongated the hole. So we improvised our best to just bolt it directly to the arms, some hose clamps in order to keep that from popping off. I'm gonna stick a blowtorch on this guy, try to expand the bronze for a brass propeller without heating the shaft up. Why didn't we? <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Have the, uh, the throttle and everything turned on? Ooh. <laughs> oh, I love the sight of that. Okay, you want to go a bit faster? Oh my goodness, it's spinning so smooth. Do you notice any vibration inside? Oh, it's so smooth now. Yeah. Oh, it's so good to have a balanced prop. That's awesome. <laughs> so we set up Tony's sailboat with pretty much the simplest option for controls. We have two switches and a dial. Uh, the switch on the right here is just on off power switch. The dial controls the motor power. So as I crank that up, the propeller spins and it goes faster. If I spin the dial down below this point, it actually switches into regenerative braking. Obviously when we're not sailing, the region doesn't have any effect. Um, and then we have on the left side, a switch to change forwards and reverse. So that's forwards, that's reverse. Um, and we just, you know, mounted some waterproof boot toggle switches into an aluminum box. The cycle analyst down here is hooked up, but just as a monitor. So it lets us see what's going on. So when I was over visiting Tony a couple of weeks ago, I reset the cycle analyst so that it would start with zero amp hours. And we can see that since then she's used 393 amp hours. Um, Tony's boat has 10 48 volt batteries and two 72 volt batteries on it. Uh, the 48 volt packs, each one is about 35 amp hours each. So we expect her to get 350 amp hours when she's running at 48 volts. Uh, she did a trip out to Main Island for a music festival. On her way back, the 48 volt battery went totally flat. Uh, so at that point she switched over to the 72 volt batteries and then uh, made it not quite the rest of the way, but most of the way back on those until those ones cut out. And we would have expected 350 amp hours from the 48 volts. The 72 volt batteries are 24 amp hours each. So with both of those, we were expect to get Get another 48 and that more or less lines up just with what we see here um, of just under 400 amp hours in total um, but that was with the boat uh, covered in muscles and barnacles and with a less than ideal propeller on it uh, so we're hoping that with the hull cleaned out uh, that she'll in the future be able to do that same kind of trip to Main Island and back uh, on a single charge of battery pack um, and further helped by the fact that she's now installed a giant solar array uh, with 900 watts of solar capture and essentially more on the sides. Um, so we'll just quickly show the battery system inside the boat. Uh, our friend Phil installed this um, in Victoria earlier this year. So let's look in. So all told in here, we have 12 of these 1.6 kilowatt hour battery packs. Uh, so that gives her just over 19 kilowatt hours in total. Uh, it's a little bit less than what we have on Shamrock, but it's a lot more than most electric sailboats we see that tend to be around 10 kilowatt hours. Uh, so we've got a set of parallel batteries on the bottom, another set of parallel batteries on the top, and each of those parallel connections is brought to the motor controller. So there's two leads into the motor controller, and each one of those parallel groups is then fused with the large fuse in case there's a short further downstream. And we'll find out soon enough what that gives for meaningful range at different speed levels uh, now that the hull's all cleaned out and we're gonna put some instrumentation on here in order to actually monitor her consumption the next time we go out sailing. Hopefully there's a sunny day for that and it'll be soon. On my way back from this trip out to Main Island for the Campbell Bay Music Festival, we were underway at night and it was my first time being underway at night with the electric motor. Really love uh, being on the ocean at night moving. It's just really a different atmosphere than during the day. Got the stars above and phosphorescence in the water. And with the quiet electric motor, you could see all the sea life around the sailboat in a way I think you would not be able to with the diesel engine. So looking out over the water, seeing fish darting around and all lit up by the phosphorescence, including a jellyfish. So electric motors can lend themselves to some pretty psychedelic magical experiences. Um, <laughs>